Okay, so welcome everybody to the Tuesday postdoc talks, and we'll start with a very intriguing title. <laughs> okay, thanks for the introduction. Uh, there's a subtitle. Uh, the, the title is supposed to be a joke. Maybe some of you <laughs> get it. Um, so this talk is about um, the relationship between uh, an, a combinatorial object called the uh, Kashiwara crystals and uh, um, the endoscopy phenomenon in number theory. Accident means I found this bag. Okay, so let's uh, start by cooking some Kashiwara crystal first. Um, let's look at this G, uh, the group of uh, three by three invertible matrices and the vector space of three by three uh, trace zero matrices and G acts on V uh, by conjugation. Okay. <clears throat> and V has the following basis. Uh, two of them uh, are diagonal matrices and the other are elementary matrices. Okay, quite straightforward. I denote it by uh, uh, script B. And I chose these bases because if we look at the diagonal uh, matrix action in G, uh, diagonal matrix in G acting, uh, then this basically consists of uh, eigenvectors. So this is the first step towards uh, analyzing any G representation by looking at the diagonal ones. And G is generated uh, aside from diagonal matrices, also these uh, upper or lower triangular matrices. And the T here is a complex parameter. And for example, we can take the F1 of T and these are some examples. You can easily compute the action. And we organize the result on the right-hand side according to the, uh, the order of T appearing. And these results can be visualized in the following way, like a diagram. And what we do here is uh, we only take the linear term. So secretly, I'm actually just looking at the algebra actions. Um, and uh, we ignore all the non-trivial coefficients like three, negative one, and so on. So we only take the, 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 the basis part. And then you, for the third, third example here, you might, uh, you might want uh, wondering about like where did this H2 go on the, on the top? Uh, this is left as, as an exercise. Uh, so the hint is that if you try to apply F1 of T to both H1 and H2 in the result, uh, you will see why I only keep, uh, I only kept H1. And we collect all the uh, results. Of course, the, the you know, EIs and F2 of T, they can be described similarly. And if we collect all the results, well, these are the only the F part. So this is a, a graph with nodes being the, the basis vectors and the, the arrows being the F1 and F2 arrows. And this is called the uh, crystal graph of B. So this, we obtain our first Kashiwara crystal from the reputation B. All right. So uh, let's look at uh, a slightly more complicated example. So let's take V2 to be a symmetric square of V, which is uh, which happens to be isomorphic to a space of quadratic forms on B. And uh, with the basis uh, script B, we can just uh, uh, naturally induce a, a basis of uh, B2. And as G representation, uh, B2 also decomposes into three irreducible ones. And uh, there is a trivial representation V0 and uh, a copy of the original representation V inside it. And there's another one, V prime, which is 27 dimensional, that is new. And uh, for simplicity for V2, I will only be focusing on the V prime part uh, because this is the, the, the new input. And note that uh, this basis V2 uh, is not compatible with the uh, decomposition. For example, the trivial representation is spanned by the following basis, which is not a, a you know a form x tensor y. Nevertheless, uh, with more work, it is still possible to draw the combinatorial essence of uh, V two um, into a diagram similar in the in a similar fashion as V. 
So this is the result. This is the V prime part. And uh, the question mark in the, in the diagram just means, uh, well, when you go deeper and deeper into the diagram, you need more work. It's not as straightforward as V, but there is a way to do it. Okay. So this is our uh, second uh, Kashwara crystal. And the, 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 the examples uh, following will be based on these two uh, crystals. What are the question mark? Oh, oh. They're, they're just uh, some something that uh, you can. So basically, there's a way to mark them uh, according to uh, using like the you know, the form like uh, x tensor y, but uh, it's not uh, really viewed as vectors in V prime because the basis is not um, preserved after you decompose the reputation. Um, so yeah, yeah I, I will not dive into it. It's a bit more complicated. Okay, so uh, now we have two Kashwar crystals. It's time to dig in. And for what purpose? Um, let me remind, like, we from a representation, we showed that uh, you can come up with, you can extract some combinatorial essence from the representation, which is the Kashwara crystal. And in fact, there is also a way to go backwards to resurrect the skeleton back into flesh and blood. Uh, to get your uh, representation back. Uh, it's actually can be done through like quantum groups, like someone mentioned uh, yesterday, but uh, we'll not do that. It's a bit more involved and it's not needed. Instead, we only look at the action of a special class of elements in the group G. And for these elements, it's possible to recover the action without recovering the whole representation. And uh, this partial resurrection will have huge uh, significance in number theory. Okay. So I hope everyone has uh, finished their Kashwara crystals because now we are going to perform some endoscopy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the special element I mentioned earlier is this element uh, sigma h. This is a permutation one, two, three and also viewed at three by three permutation matrix. And uh, we want to look at the action of sigma h on the so-called zero weight space. This is a subspace of V that is fixed by every diagonal matrix. So this is a two dimensional space spanned by H1 and H2. And similarly, we look at the thing, uh, similar uh, thing for, for V2. So this is a subspace of V2, which is six dimensional. Or rather, for simplicity, we'll only be focusing on the V prime part. And the claim is um, we can recover the action or eigenvalues of sigma H using uh, the crystal graph of uh, V and V2. Okay. Of course, by itself, it's just a linear algebra uh, exercise. But because we have smoked so many Kashwara crystals, we now forgot how to do linear algebra. Instead, we hallucinate, and uh, we got this uh, kappa matrix. So this is special matrix. Uh, zeta 3 is the third root of unity. And uh, we make this following bizarre looking rule, which I'll explain later. And the sigma h and the kappa, they are related uh, by the endoscopy phenomenon in number theory. So the more precise claim is that uh, the action of sigma h can be recovered using crystal graph and the kappa rule uh, above. Okay, so let's see it in action. So the kappa rule here, I, I listed here, and here's the graph for v bracket zero. And then we have h1 and h2. So how does it work? So we take h1 first, and uh, we, 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 we look at the, the diagram, we see we have like a single F1 arrow pointing to it. So it induces a pair F1 comma one. And according to the rule above, it gives uh, the number zeta three to the first power. And for H2, it has a single F2 arrow pointing to it. So it induces the pair F2 comma one. And uh, according to the rule, you get uh, zeta three <laughs> squared. So later, if you regain your ability to do linear algebra, you can just compute the sigma h section on v bracket zero and see these are indeed the, the, the eigenvalues. 
Okay, so this is our first example. And to be to be um, to be cautious that uh, you know H one and H two are not eigenvectors. And uh, the second example is slightly more complicated. So look at a V prime zero. Now it's a three dimensional space, and the eigen uh, values are one, zeta three, and zeta three squared. And the procedure looks like this. So if we look at the orange dot, it has a single F1 arrow pointing to it, but you can go further up. So you, you see there is a chain of a length two F1 arrow pointing to it. So instead of F1 comma one, we get F1 comma two. And according to the rule, you get zeta three squared. And for the green dot, you have uh, two arrows pointing to it. There's F1 comma one of length one and F2 uh, with length one, and you got two numbers. And then what we do is we, we take the product, simply take the product, and we obtain one in the end. And the blue one, we got F2 comma two, according to the diagram, and uh, we got uh, zeta three to the fourth power, which is the same as zeta three. So you can see that uh, the three numbers uh, below matches the three eigenvalues above. Okay. okay, now we have done our experiment. It's time to scale up and profit of it. A recap, we have three active ingredients. Okay. Uh, the first is a special element, a sigma H, called a twisted for venous. And a special matrix uh, called uh, kappa called the uh, endoscopy uh, parameter. And the representation. And sigma H and sigma are part of so called endoscopy data. And for representation V or V prime, uh, there's an a, a associated crystal graph. And the conclusion is that um, we can use kappa and the crystal graph to recover the action of sigma h on v bracket zero. And what is this endoscopy phenomenon? Uh, so let me, let me explain using a very simple example. So in SL2 of C, any two diagonalizable matrix, matrices, um, they are conjugate if or only if they have the same trace. So this is just the basic in algebra. But uh, it's no, no, no longer true in, for example, SL2R. Because, uh, for example, if you have a counterclockwise rotations, they are not SL2R conjugate to clockwise ones. They are conjugate over either SL2 of C or GL2 of R, for example. And so this is the endoscopy phenomenon, and uh, they lead to a uh, huge issues number theory. So, so our you know, pharmaceutical pursuit will worth the money. And uh, here is the, the general claim. And uh, obviously, I don't have time to explain every single detail. It will take forever. So I'll just uh, quickly go through the uh, thing, just like any medicine ads. So they have rapid fire <laughs> that nobody can understand. <laughs> So now G is a reductive group, well, unramified reductive group over a local field, uh, and, L, uh, and it's L, LG. One minute. Yeah, thank you. This is the last slide. So kappa in LG is part of an endoscopic datum. And the important part of an endoscopic datum is this L embedding, LH into LG. And V is a repetition of LG. So actually, the, the earlier G in examples is uh, secretly this LG here. So the G and LG, they are kind of rows split. Uh, well, it, it's meant to be confusing. <laughs> um, so we, we restrict the V to LH. We denote it by, you know, we get another reputation. And for the LG uh, crystal uh, of V, and then we can, together with kappa, we can uh, come up with certain C vector space and a linear operator on it. And for the LH part, there is uh, also an associated vector space with a 
linear operator uh, attached to it. And the claim is that we have isomorphism between the two. So a vector space with a linear operator, a well, two pairs. And this result is, uh, I call it an asymptotic fundamental lemma. And uh, there is actually a more general version of it, where zero here is replaced by a non-trivial weight, mu. Uh, but the statement is uh, even more complicated, and uh, it involves uh, a non-trivial transfer factor defined by Lalland and Shostad. And uh, it is a combinatorial analog of the Lalland Shostad and Dosquilier fundamental lemma in number theory. And uh, I believe there should be a lot of uh, more uh, a lot of uh, analogs in a, a much broader context, like a uh, radical trace format. And uh, one future uh, endeavor of mine is trying to understand, and uh, maybe uh, if anyone ha has interested in this, uh, discussions are most welcome. Thank you. What was the bracket zero? You had new bracket zero. Oh, bracket zero is just a uh, uh, your orientation, and uh, you have porous action. I zero means zero, zero weight. Zero. Yeah. Yeah. In in these crystal graphs you had earlier, how are you picking what vertices to look at? Uh, so in the Like, like, why do we consider? Oh, you mean like uh, here? Yeah. Yeah, these are the weight zero vertices. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So, should I ask? 